Every year, record numbers of visitors flock into our state and national parks all over the country. But for some of these folks, it will be their final destination, as time has proven repeatedly that many will never see again the light of day despite extensive search and rescue efforts. So join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10. In October of 2021, a 78-year-old experienced outdoorsman named Duane Miles went missing inside the Graves Creek Trailhead area of Amanda Park in Washington. The Beaver Washington native told friends that he had planned to hike off trail south of the Graves Creek campground an exit near Graves Creek Corral. On the morning of October 23rd, Duane parked his vehicle at the campground and set out, but was never heard from again. Family reported him missing after failing to check in with them later that evening, and by the following day, park rangers filtered into the area. Searchers spent more than 2,000 hours searching for Duane which included dozens of search and rescue personnel, dog teams, aircraft, and river searches by dive teams. He was last known to be wearing camouflage clothing, carried a dark colored backpack with supplies, a cell phone, and a camo hat. At 78, he was still very active outdoors, and one of his favorite hobbies involved collecting elk antlers which was something search and rescue considered during their search effort. But despite all the sources poured into the search effort, not a single trace of the man was found. At the time of his disappearance, Duane was around 185 pounds and about 5'10". If you have any information about this case, contact the National Park Service Investigative Branch tip line at 888-653. 0009 Number 9 In September of 2021, a 74-year-old Utah conservationist went missing while visiting the backcountry inside Yellowstone National Park. Kim Krumbo a former park ranger and retired Navy SEAL set out on a four-night excursion with his half-brother, Mark O'Neill, but never returned. After being reported overdue by family, searchers from the National Park Service and local law enforcement kicked off an extensive search effort on multiple fronts, including land, air, and water. On the second day of the search, they discovered a vacant campsite on the south side of the lake belonging to the men. And by the third day, crews found a canoe, paddle, personal flotation device, and other items along the lake's east shore that belonged to the men. But by the fourth day, crews found Mark's body along the east shore of Shoshone Lake, the second largest lake in Yellowstone. No cause of death was revealed but many suspect hypothermia may have been to blame as nighttime temperatures dropped near freezing levels. As days turned into weeks, no further evidence was found. With worsening weather conditions, dwindling resources, and a total lack of clues, the search for Kim would be called off by mid-October. This was the last formal update from the National Park Service. The disappearance of Kim Krumbo came as a shock to many who came to know him. He spent his life outdoors, was in good physical condition, and had many projects lined up for the future. In his many quote-unquote heavy-duty adventures, Kim had a lot of close calls that he never should have survived, his wife said. He'd been in a helicopter crash in Vietnam, where the aircraft had burst into flames. He'd been attacked by an elk. He faced innumerable monstrous river rapids 
and survived out in the wilderness. He'd also had both of his shoulders replaced, one after the other. Ironically, when Kim and his brother chose to go to Yellowstone, they had been wanting a low-key getaway, she added. A few days in a beautiful place that would recharge them mentally and spiritually. Number 8 In September 2021, a 74-year-old hiker named Gary Fisk went missing from Girdwood in Alaska during a solo hike on the Crow Pass Trail in the Chugach Mountains. The experienced hiker set out on the morning of September 21st around 8 a.m. and had planned to traverse the entirety of the 21-mile hike, which typically takes the average hiker around two to three days to complete. He was expected to finish up by Thursday afternoon. Well, Thursday afternoon came and went, and that's when he was reported overdue by family members. Search operations began around 4 p.m. the following day, and by Saturday, Alaska state troopers filtered into the area, along with Alaska Mountain Rescue Groups and many volunteers Helicopters were dispatched along to aid ground teams that included search dogs and FLIR technology. By the second day of the search, winter weather conditions began to move into the area, complicating search efforts. Gary was last known to be wearing a royal blue coat, black knitted hat, black rain pants, and a bright red shirt. But despite the bright clothing he was wearing, not a single clue has surfaced pointing to the man's whereabouts. After a week of intense searches that not only covered the heavily wooded area and the 21-mile stretch of trail, but also the surrounding game trails and wilderness, the Crow Pass Cabin, and the Eagle River, which for many of the trail's hikers often marks the halfway point of the hike. Anyone with information is encouraged to reach out to the Alaska State Troopers at 907-451-5100. Number 7 In September of 2013, a 36-year-old Arvada resident went missing during a five-day camping trip near the South Colony Trailhead, within San Isabel National Forest in Colorado. The family of Mark Stice reported him missing on September 22nd, after failing to return from a hiking and camping excursion that began five days earlier on September 16th. Immediately, search and rescue teams in Custer County arrived at the trailhead, where they would soon discover his vehicle, parked at the South Colony Trailhead. After no further sign of Mark anywhere, they began entering the wilderness and would eventually find his campsite on the 24th. Mark was known to venture off the beaten path, which only complicated search efforts. Some of the gear found at the campsite suggested that Mark was prepared for inclement weather and had more than enough provisions to last him the entirety of the trip and longer. After over a week and 1,000 hours of technical searches by search and rescue personnel that include law enforcement, dog teams, and volunteers, the search was called off. Some believe that Mark may have set out into the Crestone Peak or Carson Peak areas, but there was no physical evidence of this at all. Mark was last seen wearing a blue jacket with a hood along with a dark blue backpack. He was described as an experienced outdoorsman who had been hiking and camping for most of his life. Number 6 In October of 2010, a 38-year-old named Abisha Ray Mounts, or Abe, left his Atlanta home in his Jeep Wrangler and set out to Colorado to enjoy the outdoors. He told his wife he'd return in a couple of weeks, 
which was not unusual for the outdoorsman. But shortly after heading out, he was never heard from again. A couple weeks later, Abe's jeep was discovered abandoned along the Continental Divide Trail, heading out into the Sangre Cristo Mountains in Colorado. Soon thereafter, a large search and rescue operation was conducted in the area that involved not only local law enforcement and search and rescue teams, but also the Colorado National Guard. Search dogs were unable to follow his scent beyond that of his vehicle, and despite several days of intense searches, no clues were found pointing to Abe's whereabouts. His wife added that Abe was an avid backpacker, having completed an Appalachian Trail thru-hike from Maine to George in 2009. Since that time, Abe continued to remain active in the outdoors up until the time of his disappearance. He was noted as being in good spirits and did not suffer from depression as far as anyone knew. I would like to mention that his disappearance happened strikingly close to that of Mark Stice's, about 2.5 hours by road, or just 15 miles as the crow flies. Number 5 In July of 1993, a then 20-year-old Yellowstone National Park employee named Darren Newell Dixon disappeared shortly after quitting his job as a busboy at the Roosevelt Lodge within the park in Montana. Darren, whom was halfway through his second season working at the lodge, abruptly quit his job on July 2nd and had gone missing two days later. He was last seen by other employees on the morning of July 4th. But there was no indication that anything was wrong, and Darren had planned to return home to Selma, Indiana, in the days to come. So when he went missing, many assumed he had decided to return home early without telling anyone. Well, not long after, his car was found parked at the Lamar River Canyon pullout with his wallet and other personal belongings still inside. At this point, authorities believe Darren may have went fishing as some of his gear was missing. A week-long extensive search of the area revealed no other clues pointing to the man's whereabouts. For the remainder of the summer, park staff, search and rescue, law enforcement, and many volunteers continued their search within the Lamar River Canyon area and eventually expanding their efforts to other areas within Yellowstone. By September of 1993, everyone had assumed the worst and published his obituary. A scholarship would later be established in his name. Number 4 In the summer of 2015, a 76-year-old San Carlo hiker disappeared during his camping trip with a friend at Five for Big Sur State Park in California. Harold Drake was reported missing July 8th after failing to return to the campsite he and his buddy shared. The friend stated that Harold decided to go on a solo hike that morning and promised to return just afternoon, but he was never seen again. He was last seen leaving the campsite and heading toward either the Pine Ridge Trail or Mount Manuel Trail. At the time he went missing, the experienced hiker only carried a gallon of water and a handful of snacks. Those who knew Harold stated that he was in good shape and had no known medical or psychological problems. Search crews from Monterey, Marin, Santa Cruz, and Ventura counties coordinating an extensive search and rescue effort that not only focused primarily on the two main paths leaving the campsite, but also on adjacent trails. With the assistance from state park rangers and law enforcement, the search expanded into Big Sur Gorge several days into the search. 
Helicopters from the Naval Air Station in Fresno, along with the National Guard, combed through roughly 100 miles of trail and off-trail areas. Water searches in nearby rivers also turned up no evidence pointing to Harold's whereabouts. As of March 2022, Harold remains missing. This is in the same area where Arvin Nelson disappeared in August of 2014, and despite a large search, no trace of him was found either. I covered his case briefly in an earlier volume. Number 3 In February 2021, a 21-year-old woman named Noemi Bolivar went missing near the Ann Kolb Nature Center in the Hollywood area of California. Noemi, who was last seen on security video from a Broward County Transit bus in the vicinity, was walking solo and heading toward the nature preserve where she had planned to visit for the afternoon. The plant and wildlife major was familiar with the center, having been there on numerous occasions. But after failing to contact friends and family on the night of February 11th, they grew concerned and sent out to find her. In addition to the Hollywood police, family members, friends, church members, and many volunteers conducted a search of the center, which closed briefly to accommodate search efforts. Around 200 people gathered to conduct the search for Noemi, spending weeks in and around the search zone, combing waterways, forest trails, and the nature center's infrastructure. Missing person flyers were posted all around the area, and meetings were held regularly to reinvigorate search efforts. But despite this, not a single trace of Noemi was ever found. Her phone would later ping in the area, but after this, nothing else surfaced. Her parents say she is a high-functioning person with autism and is on Adderall after she was diagnosed with ADHD. But anyone with information is encouraged to contact the Hollywood Police Department at 954-764-4357. Number 2 In October of 2019, Mark Anthony Stridmotter, a 44-year-old elk hunter, went missing inside Medicine Bow National Forest in Wyoming after a solo hunting trip. He was last seen at the Come and Go in Saratoga at around 5.45 a.m. to gather supplies for the trip before heading out into the forest. At approximately 11 a.m., Mark sent a text to his girlfriend, and that was the last time he was ever heard from. When he failed to check in with loved ones the following day, he was reported missing to park rangers and local law enforcement. The search, which consisted of several teams including park rangers, local law enforcement, canine units, and aerial sources, began their search in the wee hours of October 20th where they would soon locate his truck on Forest Road 801 in the Sage Creek Rollins South Road area, also known as Deep Jack Road. At the scene, Mark's binoculars and a few other items were discovered about 600 yards, leading away from his truck into the nearby woods. As the search progressed over the next few days, the weather grew unseasonably cold as temperatures dropped below zero followed by sleet and heavy snow. Unable to compete with the weather, searches were temporarily suspended by October 23rd, but would resume a few days later. By that point, no other clues were found and resources had dried up. As the official search ended, friends and family would continue to keep the search active in the weeks and months to follow. But as of March 2022, Mark Strittmatter still remains missing. Number 1 
In January of 2022, a recent 24-year-old college graduate named Tommy Howe vanished after a bizarre chain of events just outside of Libertyville near Chicago, Illinois. It all began on the morning of January 22nd, near I-94 on Route 176, where Tommy was involved in a traffic collision, but then left the scene of the accident before authorities could arrive. Police stated that for unknown reasons, he hit a guardrail, then veered back into traffic before hitting another car. The vehicle stopped in the highway medium, where CHP were then notified. The driver of the other car then witnessed the 24-year-old calmly and casually leave the scene, cross the highway, and enter the nearby Old School Forest Preserve. This was the last known whereabouts of Tommy. Law enforcement, park officials, search and rescue personnel, and hundreds of volunteers partook in the search, utilizing dog teams as well as ground, air, and water searches. Days later, police would eventually find Tommy's work cell phone in the forest preserve, but no other shred of evidence was found. Described as 5'8 with brown hair and brown eyes, Tommy was last seen wearing a gray North Face jacket, dark pants, and black and white Vans brand shoes. His cell phone records and behavior revealed little to no signs that anything was odd prior to the accident. Those who knew him were baffled by his disappearance, as this was completely out of character for him to do so. After several weeks of searches, it would eventually be called off altogether. And there you have it. Just another reminder to always use good communication out there. Carry extra supplies for preparedness. Bring a GPS locator device. And never take Mother Nature for granted. Thanks for joining me. And subscribe for more videos.